do you know about bean factory and application context bean factory and application context is a, it is a container which is ioc container we be we, we define as a class uh, where it is located and different uh, define the reference id and if we define in class like variable which is get uh, by by use of uh, i think uh, getter as setter method and uh, it, uh, taking with property and if we declare as a constructor then we can use a constructor parameter but uh, in case of application context it is the uh, here is the class class path application context which is read the data from the with uh, between container and get the data to the application container which is uh, stored the uh, use the value Okay. Like that. What is the difference between method overriding and method overloading? Method overriding means we can change the method in the uh, parent class in the child class. Uh, means we can change the function of function. What is to be done inside the child class? It will be different in uh, both the parent and the child. Uh, overloading means uh, we can add uh, some more changes in the method in child class. What? So can we achieve overloading method overloading by just changing the return type of method? method overloading is mainly does not depend on the return type it's depend on the number of arguments or type of arguments okay. method name be the method uh, uh, return type can be a different but in uh, overloading right yeah. in uh, in overriding uh, we can have a covariant type okay. like if you are in parent if you have object in child you can have a string because string is a child of object uh, some other thing like that. covariant types you can use in overriding one suppose if we don't override hash code while using an object in hashing collection i mean hashing collection means uh, you can say hash map is internally using overriding hash code so suppose if we don't override hash code then what will be the impact hash code is coming with the, with the equal method so it is it is a contract if we are overriding the equal method then we should override the hash code also then only we can achieve our hash code functionality perfectly otherwise there will be the i don't know what will happen with that if we don't override equals method then then what will happen then i think it will work. it will work perfectly yeah it will work perfectly i don't think so there is any impact if uh, we are not overriding the hash code method i don't think so i mean suppose if you are not overriding hash code method or equals method any of them so what will happen you are not defining mm -hmm. objects are equal or not so suppose you have two string objects with the same mm -hmm. content those might be treated different by the hash map if they are in different heap and if you don't override hash code so by overriding hash code you are telling in hash map you are defining the equality so mm -hmm. what is yeah. the advantage of using the method of optional class or using optional class in general okay so basically optional is used to handle the we can handle the null pointers in a better way so wherever earlier let's say we are consuming a member of a variable object which is already null so and if we are trying to perform some operation let's say we are doing multiplication or uh, subtraction there or adding some content so at the time will it will throw a null pointer exception so and we have to make try catch block and do a lot of stuff so instead of that we can use an optional so it will return an optional object and we can check in optional object whether the value is present or not if it is present then we'll perform the operation otherwise we can there's a method one more method is there which will where we can define what uh, should be the output in case the data is null so that, that that sort of thing so that that helps in handling null pointers there can you tell me the internal working of a concurrent hash map concurrent hash map like so like if we, if we talk about uh, our java 1.8 feature like so in, in the concurrent hash map basically like um, it is divided into these segments and each segment is consist of a hash map we could say uh, one hash map so like uh, it it will not uh, lock the whole object uh, basically like if multiple threads they want to they want to read concurrently that is possible because is it is divided into these segments and uh, like if, if they have to write also if they have to write into different segments then they it's probably possible we can have a you know different segments and the locking so basically internally it is use the re entrant lock that is have helpful for to to perform this kind of operations yeah. okay so there is a method called find first and there is a method called find any so what is the difference okay so in find first we are specifying a particular object which has to be checked in that particular list if it is 
available then it will return it and find any is like we are not giving any input to it we are just checking whether the list is having any value associated with the condition or not if it if the condition satisfied as any value is there then that will be given back in find in and in find first the specific uh, whatever we are passing to that method if that is available and it is uh, occurred in that list then uh, that will return i guess do you know about a servlet life cycle in a servlet container it starts with ng sorry not ng it's uh, with init and we have a process to serve i did not worked on any of the servlets but we started with spring and struts directly so that's where i started working we have a front end controller that follows the front end design patterns and then it goes to uh, the controller for there it goes with the init and then uh, some process method and then i think destroy internally i could not recollect the methods i think front controller is introduced in with spring the thing is the spring or any other latest framework spring boot or anything internally it uses servlet exactly you are right you are right but yeah. Uh, but i'll have to check on that also if a method any method throws null pointer exception or file not found exception and this class is a super class now we have a subclass also and in subclass mm-hmm. we are overriding that same method and in subclass method we are trying to throw io exception so is that fine okay. or is that something wrong here so whenever like you are having the parent child relationship in case of exceptions like uh, the overridden methods you should follow the exception hierarchy so a child class should not be throwing any exceptions which is on a higher hierarchy compared to its parent class so that's the thing you have to follow so another exception is kind of a runtime exception so in this the case which i gave to you in this case do we get a compile time error or runtime exception anything okay. so whenever like i think the situation is not met i think we get a compile time error uh, for overriding because the basic like overriding rules are not being followed so what do you think in this scenario it is followed or not yeah, so the super class uh, method is throwing file not found and super subclass class method is throwing, is throwing io io exception io and file not file not found is a runtime exception actually Two error actually. Yeah. What is the heap memory in Java and what is the stack memory in Java? Heap memory is nothing but uh, whatever the object which is declared with a new keyword, it uh, it will be stored in the heap memory. And stack memory is nothing but whatever the string which is declared with literals, it will be stored. Sorry, stack memory is nothing but the methods, values, the method name, variables will be stored in the stack uh, stack memory, in the part of stack memory. Heap memory is nothing but whatever the uh, object which is declared with the new keyword will be stored in the uh, What is so? What type of databases you have used? In- most of the times, I have worked with a uh, Postgres database. Most of the time, recently I I am interacting with Oracle as well. But most of the time, I have used the Postgres SQL database. And for this period of time, I used the around two years with the MongoDB as well. MongoDB, yeah, MongoDB as database. So, what do you prefer? In which uh, database uh, you are most comfortable? There is no preference as such me because I have written the functions in Oracle or Postgres procedure or functions and queries in Postgres as well. And uh, no, I have no preference as such. Uh, most of the time I was work with Postgres as well, so because of that I'm all uh, I could be less uh, preference client towards that. But other than that, I have no preference as such because I have worked with the various uh, databases. So sometimes earlier uh, there was a DB2 in the current project we migrated to Oracle. So for a moment of time I worked with the DB2. kind of i work so no preference as such from my side is jvm platform independent or dependent it is a jvm platform is a, uh, independent but jvm is independent java is a independent but jvm is a dependent because it required the java to compile or compile or run the code means one it's compiled within one at any time but while compiling requires a jvm so jvm is a dependent platform what is concurrency in java Concurrency is basically a phenomena in uh, which uh, multiple threads are uh, are running in a system or in an environment where uh, they are sharing the resources or uh, you are serving the multiple requests at a time. Concurrently, basically derived from the word concurrently. So in Hibernate, can you explain me what is lazy loading? So lazy loading means that. the data or the resource you want to pulling that will be other uh, okay the lazy loading is that it will be providing the data at the time of execution only not the by the time of context loading or something so it will load the data whenever required in short i can say okay. and suppose you have a situation that uh, in your application property you need to store password where you are storing uh, in application property passwords yeah 
considering I mean, your your point only but we can't store as a policy or something i understood that but uh, right. in, in this scenario in hypothetical situation we are storing passwords so do you know any way to ensure that passwords are hidden in property files yeah property files you want to hide the okay then one approach i can provide you just you can use the the conversion techniques to convert it into the hash codes or something or the other the conversion logics you just what we can say encrypt it mm-hmm. encrypt our passwords into the property files so that it is not easily readable that one way you can do other thing you can put the access rights on that property file the only this role or this user can only be access it i mean i'm saying in the repository if you are putting into the properties as a password the other the mainly re- mainly thing i can provide the solution as you can encrypt it what about s3 are you using s3 as well s3 bucket we are just started not aware more on that but we are started the that clusters s3 buckets kinases that piece we are started why string is immutable in java string they providing the immutability because of there is so many reasons then need to be because what happen for security reason also and if you are doing some class loading concept in the time so you can change the class names or any metadata if you can't change right so if you changing then it will be like you know, problematic for us too so for that so some of the classes needed that should not be changed for that reason like in a username password if you are changing or a class name or anything so for that reason the string as immutable so cannot be changed can we have any piece of code which can try and check your yeah i think we can have we can have are you sure? basically try try should definitely follow catch yeah so after placing that flower bracket after try there should be definitely starting of catch oh, yeah correct so all the code which is you which you think that is risky definitely you should place in try block or else before try block if i auto wire prototype bean in a singleton bean how many instances of prototype bean would be created whenever the singleton bean is called by using application context prototype is a dependency of singleton right then uh, only one bean always will get written of prototype even if you mark that as a prototype